Hey everybody, so today we're going to start talking about how to breed and raise Jack Dempsey Fry. So as you can see here, this is my male Jack Dempsey. Uh, he has a blue jean as well as a female over here. He is about six and a half inches. Um, I've had him for about four years. It's a pretty large fish, beautiful coloration on it. Same with the female, she's probably five inches I'd say. And you can see her tail fin and her top fin are both frayed. That's because when uh, they are initiating, they're initiating uh, the breeding behaviors, the male will nip at the female's fins and will kind of attack her until she submits. One of the ways that he does this is by lip locking. And lip locking is when they both hold on to each other's lips as hard as they can for until one of them submits and it's, if it isn't the female then the male will keep trying until she does but when she does submit then they do spawn most of the time you have to be very careful though when uh, trying to breed Jack Dempsey's you have to give them enough room enough shelter because they'll get very aggressive towards one another they are both in a 75 gallon tank <clears throat> by themselves right now except for this pleco up here they, uh, if you have them in too small a tank, the male will probably end up killing her. He is a very aggressive fish. He's named Jack Dempsey after a boxer, so just, uh, the name speaks for itself. So, that is one of the ways that you can tell if they're lip locking. Another way is if their coloration is getting very, very bright. Um, the males, uh, they're... Uh, you see the black stripes on them, they'll get darker, and on the female she'll almost turn like super deep black. Another way you can tell, see this mound here? This is all gravel. That gravel too, that was all right here. So what they did is they cleared all this out themselves. And what the female did is she took that little spot, that bare spot down there, and she laid her eggs and the male fertilized them. And it took them about two or three days to hatch. I have about a hundred fry in here right now. You can see a couple of them here. The tank is pretty dirty. Uh, I've been feeding it a lot because uh, I'm just trying to put as much food in as I can. I'm doing a lot of water changes, but uh, I'm feeding very heavily for the fry and for the Jack Dempsey's so they don't end up eating the fry. Um, so far, I haven't seen or um, noticed any deaths or losses in the, the fry right now. So I think I'd have about a hundred in here right now. There's probably, as you can see, a bunch of them up here. Sorry about the dirtiness of the water. Uh, so you're definitely going to need a place for the female to go uh, and have refuge if they are breeding you're definitely going to want to take the other fish out of the tank if it is uh, a community tank they will end up killing them or if you end up uh, just leaving them in there they probably might not even spawn and if they do spawn then the fry will probably get eaten I used to breed convict cichlids and their fry would always get eaten in this tank I had six convicts in here and I had two firemouth uh, cichlids so what I've been feeding uh, are these first bite Hokari pellets or flakes well not even they're just like it's like dust basically it's for the uh fry Hokari tropical first bite you're definitely going to need a large enough tank this is a 75 gallon um if you put them in too small a tank the, the female will probably never be able to get away from the male and they will get uh very aggressive you can tell the difference between a male and a female um by their back fin. The top fin is usually, you can see, I'll show you, let me get over here, hide it. 
you can see a little red lining on the top of her fin, on the top fin there, as well on the males. So this fin, you see how his fin is a little bit longer, this top fin, than hers. So the males will have a longer top fin. They'll also um, have less markings, less of the uh, lines. See how the female's a little darker and she's a little smaller. Also the male gets more of a bump on his face. See how his face uh, is more, feels like he has a big forehead basically. The female's face kind of just goes straight up. So. Once you get that determined, you can put them in a tank together, and I'd recommend about 78 degrees. And then, so the way I initiated them breeding was by turning the heat to 78 and then dropping it down to about 72 for about a day or so. What is he doing? Is he having a Caesar? So I turned the heat up to 78 and then I turned down to about 72 for a few days. And I guess that kind of imitates like a rainfall or a storm. And uh, I've heard that they do tend to like to breed in those times when there's the fluctuations in the water temperature. So the fry right now are about two weeks old. Um, they're free swimming now. At first, they will be just on the ground, like jumping around, like hopping. Um, they do look like fish now. They're, um, let's see if I can get one for you. Yeah, he's gonna get in the way. You can see that one right there, though. Just float swimming away with this one. But they're probably about uh, a little less than a centimeter right now. Now they're like a centimeter long. <clears throat> so to recap, um, so breeding behavior will be change in the coloration. There will be more aggression. Um, there'll be fin nipping. There'll be lip locking. Um, the female will be clearing out a space in the gravel. So. If they are doing that and you do want fry, I would recommend taking out the other fish in the tank because they will get extremely aggressive and most likely kill the other fish in the tank. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. See you next time.